Council and Redevelopment Agency. Uh, this is Wednesday, October 3rd, and it's 6.43. And we're going to have the um, call of order first. Roll call. Mayor Pacheco? Here. Mayor Pretem Escobar? Here. Councilmember Hodge is absent. Councilmember Real is absent. Councilmember Hurtado? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. Mistress, Mr. Figueroa, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Dale, mission statement. Together, we pledge to provide effective and efficient services in a courteous and respectful manner to improve the quality of life for all in our unique warrior community. The be of You can remain standing. We'll have Pastor Frank Sesueta. Good evening. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Uh, Father in heaven, your word tells us, God, that we are to pray for men everywhere. And God, tonight we want to begin with a prayer for our civic leaders, God, that you would bless them, God, that you would give them wisdom and the strength, God, to continue, uh, God, to what you have called them to. God, we think of our senior citizens in this city, Lord. We pray for them as well, Lord God, as they have poured their lives in this city here, Lord God. They have raised families here, God. We, we pray that you would bless them. God, for the younger generation, God, we ask that you would give them wisdom as well. Uh, and Lord, even here tonight, God, we would lift up our school teachers, our, uh, all the schools here in this city, God, uh, all of its citizens, Lord God, we lift them up to you tonight. And God, as we continue in this meeting here, may your grace be upon this place. And God, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Since we had no closed session, there's no announcements. We'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Announcements, Ms. Clark. These proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website at www.calexico.ca.gov the Friday following the City Council meeting. Mayor Pacheco will have community office hours to hear concerns of the citizens the fourth Wednesday of the month from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at City Hall in the City Manager's Conference Room, 608 Heber Avenue, Calexico. Thank you. Today we have a proclamation for, for honoring our Code Enforcement Officers Appreciation Week. And we'd like to begin with, or as the state of California has proclaimed the second week of October as Code Enforcement Officers Appreciation Week. Whereas Code Enforcement Officers provide the safety, health, and welfare of citizens of Calexico through the enforcement of local, state, and federal laws and ordinances dealing with various issues of building, zoning, housing, animal control, environmental health, and life safety. Whereas code enforcement officers have challenging and demanding roles and often do not receive recognition for the job they do in improving quality of life for residents and businesses of local communities. And whereas the role of many code enforcement officers has expanded in recent years with jurisdictions increasingly relying on the expertise and the training of code enforcement officers in their communities. Whereas code enforcement officers are dedicated, high quality, and highly trained professionals who share the goals of preventing neighborhood deterioration, enhancing communities, ensuring safety, and preserving property values through knowledge, training, and application of housing, zoning, and nuisance laws. Whereas code enforcement officers often have a highly visible role in the city of Calexico and regularly interact with the public and a variety of federal, state, county and local officials in, officials in their capacity as code enforcement officers. Whereas the city of Calexico wants to recognize and honor the code enforcement officers that serve our community and acknowledge their role in the leading the way to improve quality of life within our community. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Louis Pacheco, Mayor of the city of Calexico, 
hereby proclaim the second week of October in 2018 and annually thereafter to be known as Code Enforcement Officer Appreciation Week in the city of Calexico and the city council calls upon Calexico residents to join in recognizing and expressing their appreciation for the dedication and service by the individuals who serve as our code enforcement officers. Be it further resolved, I hereunto affix my signature, the official seal with, by the city of Calexico on this third day of October 2018. Congratulations. So who's going to come up to receive? Mr. Morales, you're gonna come up and anybody else? Code enforcement, there you go, Ms. Montes. Photo. Yes, Ms. Gonelli. There you go. Comments. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. The Mayor will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is a consent item, please comment now. The City Council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. First individual speaking. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Mr. Dale, everyone else who's here. I'm here speaking on behalf of a committee that was formed a year ago to try to save a piece of the fence for us because it's part of our history. At the time, I was the project director or project manager, depends what grant, whatever you wanted to see for the project. It started within commissions, beautification commission, then an arts commission was formed, I was chairwoman at that time in the Arts Commission. And it was a labor of love from, 1990, from 1997 to 2001. 1,500 volunteers from the community at large on both sides of the border, our schools, our service clubs, and uh, our, our government officials, everyone came together to paint a symbol of friendship, a friendship bracelet on a border fence. It was historic, it was the only one in the world like it and received national and international acclaim. Sadly, things get deteriorated and they have to be replaced. But we were given a panel to keep. And uh, the committee that was involved then, some of the members and some new people from the community also have been meeting diligently over a year in order to see what we could do with these panels. And the result, you're going to get to see. If you look right behind Veterans Monument, across from Rodney Auditorium, you will see a monument going up that symbolizes the friendship between Mexico and the United States, Calexico and Mexicali, all that tie us and bind us economically, spiritually, through family and personal ideas as, and uh, 
it's all about governments and all of us working together as a border region. We inviting everyone to please come and celebrate with us the unveiling which will take place October the 16th, it's a Tuesday, at 5.30 at the Monument site. Spread the word. It's hard for us to find volunteers from 20 years ago and identify them. If you know anyone who says they painted it or participated in any way, spread the word for us because they're the ones we're honoring. Afterwards, we will go to the Carmen Durazo Cultural Arts Center where an exhibit is being curated of the historical artifacts that have been covered from the beginning of the inception of the idea of a mural until the fruition of it. And we hope you will enjoy seeing the history and some faces looking a lot younger than they do now, 15 to 20 years later, but all still very passionate about this city that we love. And uh, there will also be a slight a light reception. Our mayor has joined us since he became mayor. He's present at all of our meetings. I want to thank him for working so hard with us uh, and supporting us. And it's about all of us. Please join us. There's no charge, it's open to the public. Invite your friends, come see a little bit of history. You have, uh, I think our mayor told us we're going to have some important entertainment there, right? The, the high school jazz band will be joining us for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour, so they'll be performing. Thank you, thank you for doing that. And we are still taking donations because all of that reception, as well as the art exhibit, is being curated with no funds, I wanna make clear, from the city. Uh, it's all personal donations from volunteers, and you can either contact me or anybody on the committee. Ben Horton is here, he's on the committee as well. Uh, of course, Mr. Mayor, our Mayor Pacheco's on the committee. Or uh, anybody on the Calexico Arts Council, which is a nonprofit, so you get a tax deduction for your donation to help us through this. Come celebrate, help us enjoy this, and remember our history and tell our younger generation we are proud of who we are in Calexico. Only in Calexico will we have a monument dedicated to a border region that we are proud of and we work with collaboratively. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Durazo. members of the council, mayor, and members of the audience. My name is Laura Estrada, field representative for assembly member Eduardo Garcia. I am happy to inform you that we have successfully completed the end of the two-year legislative cycle. Assembly member Garcia has been very busy holding hearings on behalf of the Salton Sea, as well as championing of the park bond that was approved by the voters on June 5th. Assembly member Garcia has held office hours in every community in the district and resolved countless constituency cases. As you may have read, Assemblymember Garcia has had 18 out of 21 bills signed by Governor Brown and chaptered into legislation, such as AB 626, Homemade Food Operations Act, which would amend sections 113789 of the Health and Safety Code to expand the private homes, exception within the Retail Food Code's requirements for food facilities to include self-registration or permit for whom homemade food operations. This bill will permit the sale of prepared meals and other foods from small-scale home kitchen operations. Amongst all these feats, Assemblymember Garcia continues to keep our children a priority. As our children recently returned to school, it is important that we recognize those that help keep our students safe and by passing ACR 243, Assemblymember Garcia and the rest of the legislature recognize September as Crossing Guards Keep Our Children Safe Month in the state of California. Council members, Mayor, it has been a very productive two years for the 56th Assembly District and the Assembly Member. We have had accomplishments throughout the legislative cycle. Additionally, Assemblymember Garcia looks forward to visiting city council meetings throughout the district to provide a full update of the success of our legislative endeavors. I'm happy to follow up with you if you have any specific questions or want additional information on any of our bills at a later time. Just as a reminder, if you ever have any ideas for anything that should become a law or change in statute, or if you have any difficulty with a state agency, we are here. It is a pleasure to be of service to you. Please feel free to stop by our office located at 1101 Airport Road, Suite D in Imperial. 
You may also contact me via telephone at 760-355-8656. I've left behind several copies of the entire legislative uh, bill package for this year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice summary. Mr. Young Kim. Good evening, and council members, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Kim. I believe a lot of people know me. They are smiling when I submit the papers. And I'm here again to my demand never answered. Council member Jesus Escobar falsely to inform the community John Kim signed the paper to the raise the trash fees. It not happens. But he said, Kim liar. And uh, he has uh, uh, he has proof. I don't know where is the proof. I'm demanding copy of that uh, documents. June Kim signed it, raised the trash piece. Why the council harboring these lies is false for the council members. And any council members, they supposedly know what they say, what they should be, and what they should not attack the community community members. They are doing it. I'm urging my mayor, uh, mayor uh, Pacheco to redirecting council's activities to better action as a council member, professionally. And also, I've been seeing the city park still bad conditions. And people, I don't know how they go to the restroom. We, I, when I was council member, I tried to push it to uh, build a restroom in the parks. It didn't happen. I believe that time three to two, they didn't pass. Uh, please consider about the parks. The people, they are playing the, uh, every night a lot of places. So do your job as a council members. I've been heard a lot of times, oh, we couldn't do it, we couldn't do it. I've seen some, uh, some agendas coming out to saying uh, the, what's called the contract out to the city. As, as a city council, we should try to job in our cities for our citizens. Thank you. No more. Thank you. Our time. Any, any comments from uh, Ms. Urta? Any comments for the council members? Are we down to council members? Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. There's a lot of going on in the month of October. Um, the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I got my uh, pink ribbon on. Happy to say I'm a 16-year survivor this year, and I am going to be very active to, once again, uh, help my community to be very aware of, uh, of this illness and hopefully take care of um, some uh, personal better habits in, in, in hopefully taking care of anything that might be there and because detection is, early detection is key. So the city of Calexico is also in, uh, in pink mode and we'll be celebrating Pretty in Pink this Saturday. I believe everyone will be there. It's uh, the 6th of October at the Cultural Arts Center. Pretty in Pink is a very nice luncheon for awareness, and all the ladies and men, of course, can come around. We wear pretty hats and listen to very inspiring stories and have a great lunch, and, a, and a, uh, a, um, they dress up and have all that nice stuff for us. So that's the beginning it's for... A it's a fashion show. Fashion show. Fashion show. Fashion show. So um, we'll have that. Uh, we have quite a bit going on also in other areas, which is... Uh, I started out this morning at the um, farm worker breakfast uh, group that's going to be planning that for December. So that's coming up and we're getting that planned. Uh, but then I also learned there that day that at the EDD office where they're holding the meetings that there's also a meeting going on for the uh, 18th of October that might um, be interesting to, to employers in Calexico and Imperial County. It's the Imperial Valley Employer Advisory Council. And what they're doing is they're having a presentation about employee engagement and beyond, and I found that really important and, and interesting for us because it actually goes towards training us to learn a little more about the new generation, 
known as the Millennials, and apparently uh, it's about connecting the generation gap. And I will highly recommend this kind of training because Millennials are very valuable for us, and I've had this kind of training before, and it does help. So if you want to understand your Millennials or understand your kids at least, this kind of training is really neat. So I totally uh, recommend that. Um, again, as uh, Carmen indicated, the 16th of October, we have the mural reveal, which was something really exciting that we went through, and it was highly political because it was either was it a wall or a fence and all that kind of stuff. And so we're here now at the end point, and it's really exciting because it ends up on my birthday, which is really nice. And so, of course, after all of that, I invite you over for the after party in my house. We'll, we'll probably have some mariachis there and, and a serenata. So a um, lot going on for that week, too. And I think that besides that, there was one more thing, but I'll, I'll have to remember now. But, but for now, I think that's it. The 6th, which is that, the 9th of October. Let's see what else did I have on that. Oh, for the 9th of October, the consul, which was something that we were talking to you, uh, Miguel, in economic development, the consul of Calexico, which we're very fortunate to have his office here, is uh, very uh, focused right now in trying to assist locals within the Mexicali area and, and the Imperial Valley to work together on the possibility of maybe opening up their knowledge to visas for professionals and investors in Mexico through NAFTA and other, other immigration um, visas. So um, I wanted to just really uh, quickly read these topics uh, publicly because it's something that w is going to start with this one here, but it's going to be a continuous sessions of, of meetings to invite not only the general public, but also geared towards investors and, and the different industrial parks and stuff like that in Mexicali. Because these types of visas are for talent, not only investment, but for talent as well, such as um, your engineers, your, your uh, digital um, experts and stuff like that. So it provides an opportunity for people who are wanting to, especially now that we have the new port of entry, right? A lot of individuals find that to be motivation to want to start businesses in this area. So the council recognizes that and wants to bring this. It, it's highly technical knowledge by experts in immigration and, and NAFTA laws. I'm going to read this in Spanish real quick, but the questions that you can actually find out the answers to is, how much capital is necessary to be able to put a business in the United States? And that's for our Mexican investors. Um, can the visas that someone obtains for that specialty talent become an actual permanent residence one day? Um, eh, tengo una oferta de trabajo, pero, pero irme a trabajar a Estados Unidos. I don't know that one, pero como puedo trabajar en Estados Unidos. People are basically asking how can they legalize their status in the United States. So that type of availability to be able to facilitate what the, the business plans are for these investors is very crucial information to have, and we want to provide that to them. And we want them to learn about that and to be able to benefit from it. Because many of the businesses that you already see in Calexico and El Centro and, and in this area are already benefiting from these types of visas, but we would really like for everybody to know it much more in a general manner. So we invite you to that, and that will be the 9th of October, and that will be then an afternoon session at the Women's Improvement Club. So you're welcome to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I have a few points I want, I want to uh, discuss. Uh, public safety is one. Uh, we continue to struggle with public safety. I've had multiple calls of, of issues regarding theft, vandalism, the past few weeks, the past few months, since I took office two years ago. Uh, the city is obviously constrained from a financial standpoint. We all know this. Uh, we will be hiring additional peace officers very soon, but the number that we're going to hire is well below what we're, the number that we should be. Uh, the city, given the fact that it's a board community of over 45,000 people, should have peace officers 50 plus. Once we hire the people that we hope to hire very soon, within the next three months, we're going to be at half that amount. So just do the math on that. It, it is overstressed, and we're not providing the public safety that our community requires. So I was thinking long and hard how we as a community could support ourselves along with our police department. And uh, this is something that has happened, has occurred in the past, and I'm, I'm gonna, once I finish, I, I hope that you can comment, uh, Mr. Dale, and that is Neighborhood Watch. If we start with Neighborhood Watch, it brings the community, the police, and the city together. It doesn't have to happen throughout the city because it's a huge undertaking and we need buy-in from the community. 
And by buying, you really need to buy into it and support it. But I think this is an avenue that Calexico will be able to grow into. It's an avenue where the community will be fully engaged, and it's an avenue that will be able to support, we will be able to support one another specifically from theft and vandalism. Uh, I, I'm hoping I can get a few comments, uh, Mr. Dale, because I think that this is very important. Uh, we haven't touched upon this uh, and pushed this, and I think this is definitely something we should push, uh, even to the point of creating an ad hoc committee. Um, again, I'm not a public safety expert, I'm not a former police officer, but again, the, the issues continue to increase and we need to do something about it and we need to empower our community. I think this is an, an avenue in the right direction if it's done correctly. You want to comment or? Okay, perfect. Uh, point number two, code enforcement. Uh, it's interesting that we, oh, she left. It's interesting that we honor our code enforcement officer and we go back to square one. We have one code enforcement officer for the city of Calexico. A city our size, plus or minus, should have four code, code enforcement officers. Again, the idea here is to empower our community. The idea here is to get volunteers from our community, train these volunteers, and have these volunteers assist our city staff in code enforcement. Again, this is a step in the right direction. City Hall is understaffed, and if you drive along Calexico, drive along the major intersections, you're going to see code enforcement being broken after code enforcement being broken. If we empower our community, we train them, we will be able to more adequately enforce our ordinances. Third, adopt a park. Our parks are overutilized and under-maintained. For the first time in a while, actually, I agree with Mr. Kim that our parks are completely in shambles. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? Potentially with a park bond. But again, we need to empower ourselves. We need to fully support, and we've talked about this at prior uh, uh, city council meetings, but we need to fully support and fully engage our community so that we can have adequate parks. And again, it's not going to happen with the city because the city is strapped for cash and has limited resources. But if we use the park bond adequately and we engage our community with, with the adopt a park program, this can definitely work. Again, it's about community involvement, community engagement, and working hand in hand, the city and its community. Fourth, um, I, I was privileged, and I say privileged because it was a very motivational, uh, awe-inspiring event, and this is the Iran Martinez at retirement uh, dinner last Friday at Club Lujo. Lujo. Um, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. Uh, he said one phrase that to me captivated the night. And he said, everyone in this room will die. This is a gentleman that's, that has stage three pancreatic cancer. And he said point blank, everyone in this room is going to die. Sooner or later. Might happen today, might happen tomorrow, might happen in three decades. But it's not how you die, it's how you live. I have not gone through cancer, but my daughter has, and his words were beyond inspirational. So if he's listening, mi respeto, Siram, mi respeto. Te deseo lo mejor en tu retiro. Lastly, uh, and I'm not sure if you want to talk a little bit more about it, because I know you're involved and you're in the committee, uh, Sergeant Legaspi. The Rotary Talent Show is coming up. Uh, I know first prize is $300, second is $200, third is uh, $100, uh, and I apologize, the date is two weeks from Saturday, correct? It's on October the 20th. October the 20th at Carmen Durazo. Do, have we set a time for that yet? Yes, it's uh, from 3 p.m. all the way to about 9 p.m., and uh, Councilman Hodge is So, and we also have the brewery Oktoberfest on that same day. So uh, let's uh, support our community events uh, for, um, for October 20th. Thank you, Mayor. Can you repeat the date for the, the two events? The 20th? October 20th, Carmen Durazo and Kermit Park, is that correct? For the uh, Oktoberfest. What, the, what date is the Oktoberfest, the same date? Yes, October 20th for both.
following the Saturday. I have two quick ones. Um, an opportunity to go with the San Diego Port Authority to Mexicali and meet with the beams uh, individuals. So that was uh, a little uh, enlightening for me, and I got to meet some some uh, individuals that had different um, businesses and maquiladores and their uh, uh, foreign 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 investment. So we uh, had an opportunity. It was I and uh, Supervisor um, Renison uh, making the, the, the visit. It was quite eye-opening. Uh, we had an opportunity to, to go to the Rotary Club, the city manager and the assistant city manager, and myself who made a small presentation about the uh, role of the city and where we were at and uh, just made some points on what uh, good strong points of where we're doing, and, and I think it went well for, for us on that one. Uh, we're just sharing the information so that people can go out and think that we are not as bad as we look, but uh, we are finding that little glimmer of hope, that light is, is shining ahead of us, and we are meeting, meeting our, our, our challenges daily. Uh, other than that, uh, Mr. Uh, Figueroa, do you have anything for the, for the order? Mr. Dale? It doesn't matter. However you like it, uh, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, if I could, I'd like to uh, invite Sergeant Legaspi up here just f as a part of my report to, to uh, talk to about the neighborhood watch issue, if, if you wouldn't mind. Sergeant, and as he's coming up, I have a few other things. Uh, I just, we had been talking uh, in recent months about some trees that we had a grant for. Uh, the city of El Centro applied for a grant from some trees and, and they did get the grant and that they're to be in, uh, installed, as you were, um, throughout the entire county. The city of Calexico will receive about 350 of those trees. Uh, we thought that they were going to come in around October, but it looks like the planting is scheduled for February. So we're looking at February to March time for the planting of these 350 trees. Um, public Works, with the, with the contributions of other department heads and so forth, will determine where those trees will go. Obviously irrigation's an issue and, uh, and, and the people that plant the trees will be trained on how to plant them so they don't die. So that is coming uh, hopefully in the next uh, four to six months. We'll get some trees. Um, I agree with you on the, the parks. The, the, actually the parks are in decent shape. The, par the, the problem with the parks is we have the restrooms which basically are an embarrassment. Um, there's broken fixtures, they're dirty, we're doing the best we can. Obviously, we know about the staffing issues and, and we're financing issues. So we're looking at some possible creative financing, if we can, to address the restroom issues. Uh, another deficiency in our parks, as I see it, is actually the parks themselves. We don't have enough parks. We need more baseball fields. We need more soccer fields. Um, and so we are, as has as been mentioned before, ha have been diligently working on the the baseball fields and one soccer field at the Cordova Park where it's now just dirt uh, that will have a restroom and lighting. We have some money from Measure D, or Measure D, Measure H that was bonded uh, in the amount of, we have about 1.6 million. It really isn't a lot of, 1.6 million sounds like a lot, but when you go start doing in, in infrastructure improvements in California, it turns out that 1.6 million really isn't a lot at all, when probably the lighting itself will be 800,000 just for the lights. Uh, so we're, but we're, we're trying to look at some different op alternatives and getting that funded fully. So it may be even volunteering, uh, getting members of the, of the community to do the grading and so forth. So we are working on getting those parks. We know we're going to lose the park at Legion Field. That's a, that's a given. So we need to get those replaced, those baseball fields, ASAP. And we are on top of that. Uh, our code enforcement officer left already, but uh, I, I, I well, point well taken. Uh, we do need to work on that. Uh, the adopt a park issue, we still are working on that. There are some insurance issues that we need to iron out before we get fully um, going on that. And uh, but that is an idea uh, that's good for the good for the entire city. So we are still looking at that as a potential. So uh, just those those small those those items. And I'll I'll go ahead if you could, Sergeant, to to address the uh, the neighborhood. Wa um, Sergeant Legaspi, can I just ask Mr. Dale a quick question? Sure. On the adopt a park, and this is just an idea that came as you were you were speaking. Okay. Is, I mean, we can challenge each other, 
I mean, I can challenge the police department to adopt the park. They can throw that back at me and say, you know, city council adopt the park. Right. We're five guys here. Well, four guys and a, and a lady. And uh, I, I, we can throw it to Chief Avila, and, and I, it goes like that. I mean, yeah. I think there's enough. Rotary would be more than happy to adopt the park. Well, I'm speaking for Rotary, but I'm sure they'll step up to the plate. Agreed. Uh, again, I think we have enough players where we, where we, won't, we will not only adopt the park, but we will, do, uh, we will be fully engaged in the responsibilities of that uh, endeavor. I, I believe the police department, you can correct me, but I think they've already committed to Cordova Park. Adopt a park. That's yeah, they did. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Well, definitely, like uh, Mr. Escobar had mentioned uh, regarding the neighborhood house or the neighborhood watch, uh, it's a, a program that's been established many, many years ago, and it's a, a well communicative um, communication between the citizens of Calexico and the police. That's how we learn from each other regarding to crime waves or so forth. It's uh, the gaining of trust between the community and the police. Uh, I've, the chief and I have spoken about having a, uh, a four-beat system, a four-beat residential area system where uh, we would involve the schools, we would involve uh, churches, uh, we would involve all <coughs> communities to get together and uh, uh, work at their uh, located areas. So that's something that we're gonna be talking about. As a matter of fact, we have a, a staff meeting this week uh, and it's something that uh, we're, we're working on. And uh, it's definitely once we get the uh, officers on board, and I believe uh, October we're going to start hiring. Uh, October, is that, is that <laughs> No pressure. No pressure, Denise. We just, we just hired two. So um, I know Denise is, is working with us in hiring uh, about 50 more. Just kidding. <laughs> just a joke. Going back to the neighborhood watch, it's something that we are working on. We've done it uh, years ago in the past, and it, it has worked uh, when we were fully staffed. We worked uh, at Cesar Chavez School. I uh, coordinated the uh, neighborhood watch program there, and we had everybody on the east side of town uh, 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 attending meetings, and, and they really liked the concept of it. And we had police officers attending these meetings and giving trainings in regarding to uh, you know, if you see something, say something. Uh, and at the same time, they would talk to us about what they're seeing and so forth. So um, that's something that we're going to be talking about this week. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Any questions? No. Put your hand with Mr. Dale. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Mr. Dale, right, right before, I'm sorry, Megan. Uh, recall, do you recall that we were having um, some some discussions with the international scene about our train going through at a certain time. Did that get solved? They changed the time to two in the morning when the train crosses. So it seems I haven't heard anything since they changed that time. So it looks like we did have the, the train then now change from six in the morning crossing through. The, the changes that have happened in that area made it Correct. very difficult. So now instead of crossing the train crossing through at six, now they decided to Cross through at two o'clock in the morning. So the problem with the train in Mexicali was that that now that the new port is over on the other side of the train, that vehicles were being stopped. Mm -hmm. So at six in the morning, that's an important time for crossing, and so mm -hmm. they came up with the idea of changing the time. So yes. So it all got coordinated. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Yes. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I, I do want to point out that on Thursday, September 27th, City Manager Dale and myself attended a breakfast organized by Procopio in honor of the new executive officer for the Regional Water Quality Control Board, Region 7, Paula Rasmussen. In addition to her, Mr. Jose Angel, the previous executive officer, was also in attendance. Um, it was a great opportunity not only to get a chance to further discuss matters um, that address Colexico with Ms. Rasmussen, but also at the same time, just make sure that we get the assurance from the former executive officer, Mr. Jose Angel, of the projects that Ms. Rasmussen will inherit that have to do with the New River Improvement Project here in Calexico. I do want to report that um, Ms. Rasmussen is up to date with where we stand with the improvements that have to occur from the border all the way to the Second Street Bridge that will enable the creation of the Parkway Project that we've discussed at length 
that will um, be situated um, in a mile and a half stretch from the Second Street Bridge to the All-American Canal siphon. I do also want to point out and provide an update um, that we expect uh, within the last quarter of this calendar year uh, to bid out uh, the contract for the construction of the Parkway project. Um, that is a vital project um, that is part of the rebirth of the west side of town in which the 400 west side homes will connect via a bicycle path and also pedestrian walkways to um, the, the um, west part of town north of, of De Anza Road and, and part of the business development that we're going to have going on on Cesar Chavez Boulevard as part of the expansion project for the port of entry. In addition to that, I want to emphasize that we continue to, to make strides in making sure that we secure additional resources with some of the items that are pending to be covered that have to do with this project. I want to highlight uh, the leadership of Assemblyman Eduardo Garcia and the local staff that's here in attendance um, in the efforts that we are undertaking. Uh, so on that end, I, I do want to emphasize that work continues. And an example of that was the event that D Mr. Dell and I attended last week. On another note, I want to add something that Mr. Escobar mentioned, which is um, a community event that's being um, spearheaded by a local um, a business, which is Colexico Brewing Company, which is the Oktoberfest uh, community event. I do want to share that we have additional partners that are um, stepping up and, and, and looking to assist us. Um, I think the experience should also be shared with certain agencies that play a key role in establishing local businesses, small businesses, not only in our city but in our county. The Small Business Development Center will be part of this event. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we want to promote is new business, a new way of conducting business in our city, and we believe that the local brewing company is an example of that. We anticipate and we encourage other local entrepreneurs to um, uh, uh, be part of this new way that we're looking to streamline business. We've got, we got ways to go. We understand that. Um, but we are certainly doing things different for the right reasons that are needed for our city. Um, the last thing that I want to point on, that I want to talk about, um, has to do with specific efforts that I've discussed in this dais in the past two meetings that have to do with opportunities to obtain resources from Sacramento for downtown. Um, I do want to share that the notice of funding availability by the Housing and Community Development Department specifically on community development block grants is issued and we're going to be looking at opportunities in which we're going to come back to the council and to the community to seek your input on the projects that we want to prioritize. Let's not forget that the city of Calexico once again has been authorized and been cleared to pursue those funds. Yeah. So we will be um, bringing this um, in, in the coming uh, two meetings I expect. I'm not sure if it's going to be on the 17th but it will be sometime in November. So on that end, that's my report, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank, thank you, everybody. Good thing. Did you get your answer? Yes. OK. OK, moving on to the consent agenda. Do we have a, a motion to accept the consent agenda items? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Discussion items for potential. Uh, any speaker? Um, for your, for, what item are you on? Item number eight. Item eight. Okay. Mr. Kim. Kind of weird. Good evening again. Uh, I saw the name of the appointment of the uh, treasurer of the city of Calexico. If you remember about 2014, 13, city been, been running by new appointed, which is a business director, is became a uh, was treasurer. What happened to the city of Calexico? The last money is gone. The treasurer is supposedly appointed by someone else, 
from the community to oversee our budget. I strongly recommend the council be considered to open to the public whom I can look into the our budget. So we can have uh, extra eyes, which is government intend to have separate eyes for our, our budget. So I strongly appoint to people from outside of the city, we can have a better eyes on our, our budget practice. Don't, don't go to the same mistake we've been had. It's something was very horrible for our city of collection. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item number eight, appointment and scoring in of city treasurer. The city clerk and Ms. Movatos, step forward. Congratulations, congratulations. We've been on item number nine, adopt the plan to modify the water and sewer rate structures over the next five years and authorize city manager to begin the Proposition 218 notification process and schedule a public hearing to consider adoption of updated water and wastewater rates. Mr. Dale. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, we are bringing this to you tonight uh, to, for approval to start the process. This is not an approval of the rates. Uh, just, just as a side note or uh, a note uh, that we plan to bring this, the rate study which we have just received in the past week and a half back to the committee with the, the subcommittee of the Economic Development and Finance Commission and the public which we started and haven't finished. So this, this hopefully we will have a meeting in the next week or two where we can bring this back uh, to you all and, uh, and, and have you bring comments back to us. So just because we're, we're starting this does not mean that we are not completing that process. So. We have two speakers on this item. I'm sorry. Mr. Ben Horton. Mr. Horton. Ben Horton with the uh, Economical Financial Advisory. We have looked at this potential water sewer proposal and we think that, in fact, we know that this is something that the city council should look very closely at because the last time we had the discussion, there was a lot of questions about it. We heard the questions from the community, we heard what they were saying and we moved forward to find a better way to make it more palatable for the community. And I think this will help the community to move forward. And we also look at the fact that when you think about the cost of living, it's usually about 2%. Well, this is gonna be 2%. It stays within the parameters. And it's something that 
is not a short term, but a long term. When you look at, uh, when you buy a house, and we gave you this example, you usually look for a mortgage for about 30 years. And this is to make it more understandable to the community. This is gonna extend it for 30 years, give and take. It's gonna refine, refinance the bonds that where we'll have more to work with and it will not, to the point, impact the community where the, the community will not say that we're paying for something that we won't be seeing because it's gonna be spread out. And it'll be something that'll be spread out within the point where the community will understand what we're trying to do now. <coughs> when you look at the uh, water and sewer, look at some example, look at history. There are communities that said they're gonna kick it down the road. So they kick it down the road. And eventually, they're to the point where the state has to come in and take over their services. And then from there, from there, ladies and gentlemen, the community has no control over it. Mm -hmm. This is something we are being able to control. We will have the ability to control, to move, and adjust. And we, we how do I say this? We will control the situation. The situation will not control you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Mr. Lopoldo Rodriguez. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the city of Calexico. The meter in my apartments went out last week, and it was a weekend, and the water department guys did a wonderful job. They were there within the first hour and got, got it taken care of. Okay, that's for that. Thank you very much. The next point is uh, I was out of town. I'm back. I haven't heard about the rate changes and I haven't seen this, but I am interested in it. Uh, see what the plan, the changes were. So when is the next meeting, if I may ask, Mr. Dale? Do we have a date yet? There's a couple scheduled. I don't know if Mr. Figueroa has a date yet or Mr. Dale. Within the next two weeks, for sure. Okay. W within the next two weeks, uh, you will be notified with ample time of the meeting date. Um, so you can um, plan accordingly and, and you can attend. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The next one. Okay, it's about the same thing, the water rates and the sewer. Uh, you know, I don't agree with it because last time we met, we were up in discussion and I missed for about a month. I'm back, I'm interested, and like I said, I will be back to the meetings. I don't agree with the chlorine change. We are having a lot of problems in El Centro with a chlorine liquid instead of tablets. And I would like a little bit more discussion on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we'll discuss that in the next meeting. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, we'll be more than glad to bring you up to speed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kim? We have the time right now, Mr. Kim, please. Well, first of all, the council obligated me to make the, present, uh, make the opinions before listening to the presentation. So I'm, I'm going to be blindly to appoint uh, my op uh, opinion is going to be here. So council wants the public is uh, bl uh, blinded. That's another one of the examples. It's supposedly only a presentation, listen first. When I was mayor, every presentation listen first to the public, then public, let the public discuss or opinion on this. They, they, they can have a right opinions. First of all, I really disappointed because we hired the same, same company. So last, uh, last meeting was said, oh, we're gonna be a more cheaper, or more lower the water rate. Why they couldn't do first time? That means they are not countable. Isn't it? So they, they can have the like a uh, rubber rates. 
as much as they can stretch you up or stretch you down. Something wrong here. That's our maturity of the, our council. I'm sad. So they're supposed to be work for the community to have a right rate. City of uh, Capistrano, they lost lawsuit a couple years ago, I believe 2015. And I was, uh, I was, I was informed that the, excuse me, lawsuit, the public utility cannot charge more than cost of the products. And we've been, City of Kalisco been doing years doing that way and our, cost, uh, our rate still going to be that way. So if a series of collection doesn't do their job right, we're going to be entitled to have a lawsuit from the citizens. Why somebody using 200 or 300 uh, cubic feet, why they have to charge for the 3,000 cubic feet? Or even they said the 1,000 cubic feet. Why they have to pay 1,000 cubic feet when they're using 300 cubic feet? There's something wrong here. We treating the, our citizens long years. Stop it, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mr. Dale. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm Kevin Burnett with Wildan Financial Services. We've got my colleague Chris Fisher also with Wildan Financial Services here. Um, we both spoke to you earlier on this year. Um, We've come back with some alternative rate options for you to consider tonight. Um, so we'll dive right into the presentation um, right here. So want to advance it, Chris? So the overall purpose of the rate study is to make sure that the utility is meeting its annual costs. So these include operation and maintenance costs, such as chemicals, power, those types of things, salaries, um, the capital side of things, to. Uh, repair and replace the distribution system, the treatment plants, um, and then the repayment of debt. We've already got some debt outstanding on the water side and we're proposing some debt on the, on the sewer side going forward. Um, and then the last two bullet points there, develop rates that are equitable and ensure rates comply with Prop 218. Uh, what we're trying to do there is make sure that the rates are set such that you're only paying for what you use and whatever rates you are charged is proportionate to the cost to charge the cost to serve you as a customer. So you're not subsidizing another class, nobody is subsidizing you. That's the goal that we're trying to achieve here. Uh, Chris, forward. Chris? Oh, oh you did already, sorry. <laughs> Got ahead of me there. Um, so the current rate study process, so as I mentioned, we work with city staff to identify some financial, op financial options for you. Um, we went back and looked at where we were before, uh, we regrouped, we reevaluated things, we came up with some new strategies, so that's what we're going to present to you tonight. Um, we've got two options for you on the water side to consider and two options on the sewer side for you to consider. Um, once we get that hopefully finalized tonight, then we can mail out the Prop 218 notices, prepare and mail those out. Um, we've got November 28th as the date scheduled to have the public hearing on the new rates, um, and then the new rates themselves would become effective January 1 of 2019. Um, so with that, um, why are we increasing the water revenue or why do we need the increase? Uh, right now, the water utility isn't meeting its annual costs. It's losing money every year. Costs are increasing much like your household costs are. Um, food is going up, hydro is going up, gas is going up. It's the same holds true for the city and for the utility specifically. If we don't add additional revenue, the water utility is going to continue to lose money and you can only lose money and reduce your reserves so long before you run out of reserves to tap into. And then the final bullet there is we've got critical capital projects that haven't been taken care of in the past and again you can only put off not doing capital for so long before it becomes an emergency situation and it needs to be taken care of. So with that the two options that we've presented in both cases it, it adds up to an 8% increase over the next five years. So we can do the 2%, 2%, 2%, 2 percent, which is basically what um, inflation is or CPI is projected to be over the next few years. Or we could go a little bit less in the first couple of years, a 1% in 1920, a 1% in 2021, 
but then we need to pick it up on the back end at 3% and 3%. So you're gonna end up in about the same place, it's just whether you want the nice even, every incre even increase every year or a little bit less at the front end and pick it up on the back end. Um, so with that, we'll go through the changes to the rate structure. So we rate, we've updated the rate structure for all customers. So right now, as was mentioned, the monthly base charge includes the first 3,000 cubic feet of water. So you pay that same rate whether you use 100 cubic feet of water, 1,000 cubic feet of water, 2,000 cubic feet of water, or 3,000. Everybody in that range is paying the same bill. So what we're proposing is to do away with that. So the new base charge isn't going to include any water use anymore. As a result of that, the base charge itself is going to go down every month. Your monthly base charge is going to be lower than what you currently pay. The flip side of that is that you're now going to be paying for all water that you use. <coughs> so if you use 10 cubic feet of water, you're paying for 10 cubic feet of water. If you use 1,000 cubic feet of water, you pay for 1,000 cubic feet of water. If you use 5,000 cubic feet, you pay for 5,000 cubic feet. So customers are now going to pay for all the water that they use. And because we're switching to this approach, it changes what the unit costs are, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, the non-residential customers, we're proposing that the base charge increases by meter size. So right now, if you're a commercial customer with a three-quarter inch meter, your meter charge is the same as a commercial customer with an eight inch meter size. The larger meters can have greater capacity, they're more expensive to replace, there's an increased cost for using a larger meter size, so we want to reflect that in the rates. So what we've got here is the proposed base charges under option one, so this was the 2%, 2% option. So you can see on the left hand column the current rates, what you charge per month, and then going forward what the rates would be um, under our proposed plan. Um, and the next slide will have, this is the volume component. Um, so where you're at right now, um, the $2.22 applies to over the minimum, so over 3,000 cubic feet from now on. Uh, the $1.99 would apply to all water use. So you can see what the rates are for the different customer classes there. Um, so then if we move on to option two, the base charge, um, same structure as we've got proposed for option one, it's just, it's a little bit less in the front years, a little bit higher to catch up on the back years, but ultimately you end up at about the same place. And then the volume rate structure is gonna be the same as what we propose for option one, the same type of structure, but again, the rates are gonna be a little bit different from year to year until we get to the out year. Um, so then we also took a look at uh, what a typical customer might pay. So if you're a customer using five units of water today, you're gonna pay $43.89. Your proposed bill would be $27.19. So you're gonna see almost a $17 decrease in your monthly water bill. Uh, we've got it at the 10 unit level, the 13 and 20 unit. So the 13 unit level is essentially our break even point. So if you're using up to 13 units of water a month currently, you're gonna see your bill go down. If you're using more than 13 units of water a month, you're gonna see your bill go up. And we've got that graphically in the next slide as well. So the red line represents what the current rate structure is. So you can see everybody's paying the same rate up to 30 units and then the, the uh, volume rate kicks in and the blue line represents what the bill would be under the proposed rate structure. So again, we've got that break even point right at about 13 units of water a month. <coughs> um, we wanted to do a little bit of comparison of how you compare to your neighbors. So the orange bar is where you're at today. Um, the green bar is where you would be at and this is assuming you're using 21 cubic feet. 21 units of water a month. So. If you're gonna be using less than that, then um, the, the graph would change accordingly. But right now, you're at the lowest, you're on the left side of the graph, and then even with the rate increase, the proposed rate changes, you're still gonna be at the, at the bottom end of your neighbors. So moving on to the sewer plan. Um, similar issues on sewer as we had on water. The sewer utility is spending more money than it's generating on an annual basis. Um, the cash reserves are being used up, so you need the additional revenue to continue operating the system, provide funding for capital, 
and ensure that there's money available in case an emergency comes up in the future, which we hope doesn't happen, but we need to plan for it, that eventuality. Um, we've got a similar type option here, um, option one and option two, so two options for your council to consider. Um, I should have mentioned this on the water side, but I'll mention it here because it applies to both. Um, the reason why we've got the rate increases are lower than they were shown previously um, is when we went back and took a look at this, we took a more comprehensive view of how to do the, the capital planning and the financial needs going forward. So it's going to be a combination of bond issues, um, use of reserves that the city has currently, um, and then some of these increases. So we're putting all three of them together to try and, and develop a more palatable um, set of options for, for a council to consider. Um, so again, we've got option one is the straight 2%, 2%, 2% matching inflation. Um, on the sewer, on the option two side, a little bit lower in the first two years, but then again, that means the last two years have to be up a little bit higher um, to make up that difference. So then if we look at the, the rates themselves, um, so the only real change that we're proposing to the sewer rate structure is right now on the water side, if you've got um, a multifamily complex, the first unit pays one rate and then the second, third, fourth, fifth units pay a lesser rate. Right now on the sewer side, that same five unit complex, everybody's saying paying the same rate. So we wanna make it consistent with what we're doing on water. So the first unit would pay the higher rate and then the subsequent second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera, would pay a lower rate um, to recognize the fact that there, there are some efficiencies there with multiple units in the same, in the same building. Um, so there we've got the, the rates that we're proposing right now. Um, so this is option one, the 2% across, the 2% each year. And then on the next slide, we've got option two. So again, same rate structure between option one and option two. It's just whether or not you have the higher increase at the front end or a higher increase at the back end. But ultimately you end up in the same place or essentially the same place by the time you get out to year five. So then if we compare to our neighbors on this one, so again, Calexico in orange on the left, that's where you're at today. And then the two options going forward, whether it's the 1% or the 2%, um, next year, you're still at the lowest end of the, of the spectrum there. And there's not, not much difference, $4, 40, 47 versus 40, 67 um, between the two options there. So you're pretty close. Um, on both of those options there, which is reflective of a 2% increase versus a 1.5% increase. Um, so with that, that's the presentation. As I said, we've got the public hearing is scheduled for November 28th. The new rates, if adopted, would go in January 1, and then there would be um, a rate adjustment July 1 of 2019, so that first 2% or that first 1%. The, the main difference is this time we're taking into account the bonding. The bond, yes, the debt. And the debt, bonding. and that, that's why it's bringing it down to a 2%, whereas before it was at four? Fours and fives before. Fours and fives. Yeah. So we've cut it in half. Yes. The bonding does, actually does two things for us. There was, and the question was, how, why did we change now? Well, we're, we're responding some of the comments that we received the first time. So what the, what the bonding does, and, and I know sometimes borrowing, is, there's good debt and bad debt, right? But what it does is it answers the question that came up last time. How can you guarantee me that those funds will be used for the CIP? When you take a bond, by law, you have to say what you're going to use those funds for, and you must use those funds for said purpose. So that addresses that item, and also, it, it addresses the rates. It gives us a lower rate. So why didn't we do this last time? Because we're trying to reduce our debt, right? I mean, and so, but because of the comments that we received, that's why we're addressing it this way. You have a proposal. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, have we, have we uh, explored, brainstormed on potential federal state funding to potentially assist us in, in these endeavors, and I'm not talking about specifically the rate issue, I'm talking about the infrastructure issues, both water and sewer. 
So there, there is very few uh, grant opportunities for larger cities, especially with water and sewer infrastructure, mostly because almost every city and county and across the United States, the infrastructure really is failing. If you look at the grade that we, that we received from, I think it was ASCE, it was like a, a D minus in terms of the infrastructure, not in the city, but across the United States partly in due to the fact that a lot of our infrastructure was installed in the 60s and it's to the point where now it's coming due, right? But a lot of the cities, districts, counties across this nation have not been planning properly, putting away money to replace that, that infrastructure as it should have been done because it's underground, it's out of sight, it's out of mind. You don't see it until pipe blows up. So this is not just a problem here it's across the across the country so now we have to start addressing that this these issues this infrastructure is well past its expected life lifespan so so the granting yeah. opportunities that he's asking that, that there's actually this nothing that 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 comes to solve the needs of where we're at grants there are there's what we call a state revolving fund where we could probably uh, uh, ask for loans the, that kind of thing, but same thing what we're doing right here with bonding. So. Okay. Uh, from a financial perspective, I think it's important that we provide full disclosure to our community. Of course. Uh, and, and more than a profit and loss, more like a, a, a cash flow statement. If you look at a cash flow statement, it really analyzes your cash inflows and your cash outflows. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I pay X number uh, of dollars in water and sewer. So those funds go to a specific, obviously, uh, revenue stream. And that revenue stream pays significant expenses. So what we want to do, or what I suggest we do, is that we provide a system generated uh, by Ms. Lovato, so whoever you deem appropriate, uh, uh, Mr. Dale, that discloses the overall cash inflows and the overall cash outflows, preferably on a monthly basis along with a net cash position. Once you have that net cash position, whether it be a net profit or a net loss, or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, a net cash increase or net cash decrease because it's statement of cash flows, what you want to do is uh, explain to our community the investments from a water standpoint and the investments from a sewer standpoint that are going to be undertaken in year one, year two, year three, and year five, because this is what we're talking about. It's a five-year plan, so we want a five-year project plan, so sort of like a project management plan from a financial perspective and an investment perspective. So once we do that, you, you basically fully engage your community as to what your money's coming in or what your net cash position is and what you will be investing or need investments for, and bottom line, the fact that you're short X number of millions of dollars for those specific investments. Mr. Dale. Yes. Oh, <laughs> one, one more thing. Okay. Uh, it's unrelated to this. You want to comment on this? No, no. I'm just, our, our capital improvement program, you're taking a look at those five years that we have, and you're going to target those items or those areas that need Sure. And that that's really the driving force behind a lot of the increase and and when you you say month to month you'll see but if we, the way we look at it is in the capital improvement program we have major expenses year two and three for example with the wastewater treatment plant improvements of 30 million dollars so you'll have you'll have you know monthly spending it'll look good and then in, in year three it'll go drop down to you know because we just we're spending you know, $2 million a month on our wastewater plant. So it, it, it really varies based on year. Does that make sense? I just wanted to clarify what your, what your thought is because your thought is about income and expenses at this given point or projections for the future because if you're already telling us under the study that we're, we're operating at a loss, then that was already reviewed. No, that's, but again, the community needs to have that full disclosure presented to them. That's in and the report, isn't it? But, I mean, but again, we need to bring it down to layman's terms and make sure that the community understands it. Again, <coughs> the, the, prior, the prior reporting that we sent out to the public a few months ago. Reader's Digest I mean, version? I, I, I would go a few steps higher than that. But uh, 
again, we need to bring it back to somebody that, any, that, 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 that our community can understand and can be fully engaged on. And again, we need to provide full disclosure from a cash flow standpoint. Where we stand now, where will we stand if we don't do any changes, and what the infrastructure is needed, both from a water and sewer standpoint. Mm -hmm. Again, providing full disclosure on a five-year project plan. I'm just because I, I think that, that a lot of that we did cover it, but like you say, what we need to do is just be much better at explaining those issues. Simplifying it, yeah. For, for as, as much as we can, like you said, so where individuals buy into it by understanding it. The, the other comment I have is, again, uh, I would encourage the ad hoc committee, I'm not a member of that committee, but I encourage the ad hoc committee, and I will also encourage the city to engage the community by opening up the water plant, literally, and providing two, three dates where the community can actually tour the facility, where we can explain to them the infrastructure needs, both from a water perspective and from a sewer perspective. And again, for them to understand in layman's terms, I'm not an engineer, uh, but for them and for us as a community to understand uh, why we need this, why it's so critical for us to invest and for us to really understand the issues at hand. Mm. If we don't visit them, and again, uh, most of us are not engineers, we're, we're not gonna fully understand the issues at hand. So I would encourage at least two dates, open-ended for our community to visit that, uh, those facilities, or our facilities, I should say. Good I think point. our sewer plant is worse off than the water treatment plant. That's true. Yeah, I think we have okay, 1947 I have uh, instruments and panels, and, and, and this is I do have a 80, 30 years old, 50 years old. I, I have a question with regard to the future increments. I remember the last time we were showing the public the, uh, the comparisons to other cities, uh, we were trying, uh, and there was an excellent presentation by staff uh, this last couple times when we were addressing this the last time where a lot of the information that we wanted the community to understand was there. But there was a part about the graphs that compares where we stand in comparison to our neighbors because many of us uh, feel we can understand things when we see how it is handled in our next door neighbor's um, offices. So we did provide that to the public, I remember, but there was one question with regard to the, to the future years because the graphs show where we stand right now in comparison, but because this is gonna be um, um, adjusting in the next five years as, as our financial plan, is there a comparison to the other cities um, for those five years? Where would we stand in year two, three, four, and five in comparison to our neighbors? We can certainly put together a chart that shows what Calexico's rates would anticipate it to be over those five years and to the extent that the neighboring communities have published what their plans are for the next five years or if they're willing to tell us what their, okay. their plans, we'll certainly include that. Okay. Some people appreciated the comparison, somebody, some didn't, but and didn't even realize that that's actually pretty important to know that we're, we're within the very normal rates uh, in comparison to our neighbors. So. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure that it's the now that we can compare and the future too. Okay. Um, so I guess we need to discuss the vote. Well, the option one and option two, do you need a vote on that today? Yes, or because. Do we want to do a two, 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 two and say 8%? Option or one or two. <laughs> two, so. Do you want to reduce you want the, to spread the, the initial around? impact for later years to increase in the four years four and five, or do you want to just have it straight across? you know what you're paying more or less yeah you could recharge I would suggest a straight line approach yeah the two percent yeah I think so too I, th I think, I think we'll it's the, the easiest to manage to explain to uh, calculate to Great. to project being take straight head on I think that's the, the consensus the consensus so if you can make I'm that motion. part of your motion do we need a motion yes motion then let's gentlemen look, let's read the let me read the, uh, the plan to adopt a plan to modify the water and sewer rate structures for the next five years and authorize city manager to begin the Prop 218 notification process and schedule a public hearing. Consider, adopted, consider adoption of the updated water and wastewater rates. So uh, we want to include option one to that, and we're including option one as to go along with the, uh, the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. The motion oh, then was there, to go with, with the. With is there a motion to accept? Motion, motion. Want me to motion? 
Motion for its approval, Mayor. Second. Uh, um, approval for the uh, two, the first option. Option one. Straight at two per, two yeah. percent increase per year. Per year, two percent plus what we're doing for the uh, notification. So that's my yes. motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Carried. Item 10, discussion of potential action regarding county register of voters request for a waiver, temporary use permit filing fee. Who's coming to us there, Mr. Figueroa, Mr. Dale? This is a request by the county uh, to park a, uh, their registrar of voters van in front of the De Anza Hotel. Uh, I do not have the authority to waive, so I bring it to council as your pleasure, yes or no. Mr. Mayor, I motion for its approval, and I suggest everyone go out and vote. <laughs> I think uh, so the easier access, we've the always, better. We've uh, always approved these um, <coughs> permit fees. Um, the reason why I'm not too happy about this is recently uh, <coughs> community benefits was. Uh, were allocated across the county and the Calexico didn't get one penny of community benefits. And I know this is for a good cause. Uh, it's voters, we typically waive this. In fact, sometimes we don't even ask for a temporary permit. But the fact that we did not, the city of Calexico got not one penny of community benefits is appalling. Uh, so I needed to say that because again, this is a waiver of a county, even though it is voting and I agree with Ms. Hurtado. It, it just, the fact that we did not get a penny from the county from community benefits really pisses me off, to be honest with you. You know, I understood that there were some, some groups. Zero. Uh, Calexico Boxing Academy? Hmm. Okay, call for the question. Is there a motion to accept? I motioned. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And it's a well noted, Mr. Escobar. We'll make sure we work on that, Mr. Escobar. <laughs> Item 11, discussion of potential action regarding Farm Workers Services Coalition of Imperial, Imperial County request for a waiver. That's for the farm worker breakfast? We're going to have breakfast, tamales, and frijoles. In appreciation of all farm workers of Imperial County, especially in Calexico, mm -hmm. I motion for its approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass. Item 12. We're going to authorize city manager to sign agreement for professional services between the city of Calexico and Benfit Mail Mall for payroll services, Mr. Dale. I'd like to invite our newly appointed city treasurer. <laughs> I couldn't believe the price, but it sounded good. Right, and um, the reason why we started looking into this is mainly because we have our finance manager doing payroll every other week. So we are paid for the services, and Benefit Mall is the company that came in lower. We received five um, quotes. Um, Benefit Mall has been established since 1980. They have approximately up to 10,000 employees um, they've done. And the reason why we started looking into this was because our HR manager suggested that we would look into them. They've been doing payroll for Hotbill. Um, it is a smaller city, but I mean, they have the same um, challenges any other government or any other city would have. So we started looking into this. They came in lower. They can handle all of our MOUs, um, all of our unions. Um, they will incorporate all of these um, challenges into doing the payroll for us. So they will do everything, um, checks, pay stops. Another neat thing that they'll have is we will be able to look at our for um, <coughs> plug-in, ins and outs, all of our pay stops online. We'll have a training for all of our employees on how to do this. They'll be able to look any of their paychecks online, on their phone, anywhere they want to look into that. Mm -hmm. So that'll free up some time, not only from payroll, but also HR technician too, because we do get a lot of demands. They can make changes to their um, yeah. W-4s, all of the changes they require, change of address, anything they want to change, they'll be able to do it on their own. I, th I think the cost outweighs what they do. It's better than having <laughs> oh, absolutely. A, an employee. Uh, yes. it's, a, it's a good price. And that's what I'm afraid of. Sometimes when it's too good to be true, it's not true. Uh, <laughs> right. but, but, but I've heard through the grapevine that you have experience with this specific vendor. Right. Um, and I'd like to hear your opinion on, on this specific vendor. 
with this specific vendor? Yes, with I do not. Um, Denise, uh, Oh, I apologize. Then I misunderstood. No, I, I would like to hear whoever has experience with this vendor. I would like to hear from from them. If anybody is skeptical of of an outsider coming in to do work, it's HR because I'm in the business of bringing people on board. And, and when I say skeptical, it's payroll. It's one of the most important functions that I think city employees feel finance does. That's probably what they feel they, you know, that's their main goal uh, is to get paid every two weeks. So when, when I relinquished payroll duties over to Benefit Mall personally um, in my prior uh, position with the other city, uh, I, I was hesitant. I, I listened to their spiel and they send you the salesman and they're telling, oh, we can do everything for you. And, and I had personally battled with the previous payroll company we dealt with because they could not accommodate um, the needs that, that we were requiring them to accommodate. You know, you have special pay and you have, as, as Carla mentioned, you have seven bargaining units that all have different levels of benefits. And to have one employee that has to memorize all seven, that's a feat in itself. But then to plug all of that in every two weeks, and, and payroll differs. I mean, it, it differs from one paycheck to the next. And uh, Benefit Mall is quite capable of creating your screens exactly to, to, tailor, to tailor them to what you need. And um, I think... <laughs> Carla was impressed as well with, with the presentation that they, they provided to us. They walked us through um, what Colexico's payroll system will look like, and they did the same thing for me. And, and like I said, I was skeptical. But within the first, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of trial runs they do, like dummy payrolls, to make sure that what they get is what you would normally get, and you compare them and you fine tooth comb and you take out your ruler and you look line by line and it added up. There were a couple of little things that needed tweaked but it was a matter of, you know, no firefighters only get paid this on this day and, and you know, council members only get paid once a month or whatever, whatever the case may be and they were able to add a column here and add a row here and there it was done and it was input the information. So it was what, what was normally a two day process for me came down to a couple of hours of inputting because they made the system, they, they, they tailored it for exactly what our city needed. And that's what they're going to be able to do for Colexico on top of all of the, <laughs> the MOUs uh, that our employee already knows. It, it's going to make it so much easier for, for whichever employee is tasked with doing the input. Um, and they're reliable. Um, they, they process and they actually hand deliver, make you sign for payroll when they deliver it. Um, again, Carla mentioned the access online. Employees can go online. There's an app. Employees can, instead of coming into HR or finance and saying, I need the last six pay stubs and I need them now, um, they can go online and if they're doing their own, you know, Verification if they're buying a house, if they're buying a car, and they need all of that for proof, it's all there, right there for them. Wow. Saves us time, saves payroll time. Okay. It's a win win for both departments and staff. Thank you. Mr. Dale, Ms. Lovatos, do we have a ballpark on how much this will save uh, uh, our city? Or general fund specifically? Mm. Yes, specifically. Um, it would save about $55,000 a year. I just wanted to ask another question. The, um, the time period of this agreement is only one year at a time? We're going to do one year to start, and then, I mean, like Denise mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to start, if this is approved, then we'll start doing, they'll start implementing all of our EMOUs and all of that. We'll do some trial runs before we even start. We're expecting, if this is approved, to start the payroll processing January 1st of next year. We'll do one year, and if everything goes well, then we'll bring it up and extend it for as many years as you would okay. like. <clears throat> Any other question? 
I just want to say I really like the fact that it's super modern. I do taxes for a living, as you know. And when our clients can actually access their own information instead of having to wait for HR to come by and, and answer those questions, that availability and the access, I saw that you also have the options to provide employees with manager helplines, access to experience additional HR answers. So all of that, uh, uh, COBRA and things like that that are so important and they take so much time and they're draining sometimes, I know. So I just love the fact that we're modernizing in that area. It was just kind of, like you said, kind of hard to believe that it's so cheap, but it's true. I see, like, for example, I'm going to mention Wells Fargo provides excellent payroll services as a general service to the public and to corporations and, and small companies, and they charge you peanuts. And it's all because it's just all modernized and, and computerized. So that's taken advantage of what well, we should be already taking advantage of. But the one question I did have was, will we still be using the, the clock in with the fingerprint? We will, and that will be interfacing to the I saw that. The and it also interfaces, interfaces with our general ledger. Or, um, it also system. interfaces with our general ledger. That is nice. It, right. So and all the back and forth, it's, it's well, streamlined. It's, so exactly. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that. I, I want to add one thing, Mayor. Yes. Uh, I do want to point out that this item was discussed twice um, at two economic development and financial advisory committee meetings, the last being last night, actually. Oh, so we have their blessing? So, so this is something that, that, that we, we've brought through, through, through the commissions to make sure that we could recommend this to you. Thank you. Well, I motion for its approval, then. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Save us some money. Yay. Item 13, authorize the city manager to purchase Musco Sport Lighting for Joel Risen Fields under Source Well, formerly NJPA, cooperative purchase agreement. Mr. Dale. Well, as you may recall, we did receive a grant from the IID to install lighting at Risen Field, which, as you're probably aware, is a is a retention basin, but it does have two uh, or three baseball or small kids fields there. T-ball. T-ball. Um, and so what happened was we put, we had an electrical engineer design it, the project, uh, and that it cost was about $10,000 or less. And, and that's why we have 140,000 now from the IED. But uh, anyways, so what happened was we, we had to throw out the bids on that because they came in at 450000 we didn't have the money to complete the project. So we have been in discussions uh, to have some of the work done as a volunteer basis and to purchase the equipment from the grant funds. This is just equipment, so you're talking about connectivity. That's going to be another, another item, but you're taking care of and looking into other options right. for the connectivity. Connecting connectivity in terms of the electrical yeah, connections. Labor. So yeah, we have, I, I believe we have some volunteers that seem like that they're going to be doing the work for us. We just have to provide the materials. Very good. Nice little volunteers. Yes. Okay. Make a motion to approve. There's a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Pass. Item 14, approve revised job description for the police sergeant. Mr. Dale. Yeah, we, we started, as you, you're probably aware, in the budget process when we were adding some positions. And uh, to start that process is timely. So before we bring it back to council for unfreezing those positions, we need to start the process. Uh, we do expect to bring this back in the next couple of weeks. But to advertise properly, there was a missing the P post certificate as a uh, way of getting into this um, sergeant level. And okay. so we want to add that. That's all that we're adding onto this job description. And you had both uh, the POA and the police department help out with, help out Denise with the uh, job description. Per their request, <laughs> correct. Okay. Motion for its approval, Mayor. For a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Gary, thank you. Let's look for those promotions. Any future agenda items? I just have one last comment. I want to invite everyone to a grand opening, because I forgot earlier, to the Calexico Wellness Center. We have a wellness center in downtown Calexico, and it's on the second floor of the um, 
Hope. Hope Pharmacy, right across the street from De Anza Hotel. They're having a uh, big thing for breast cancer too, so I put a f couple of those flyers back there. That was just my last announcement. Sorry. Not necessarily future agenda item. And I don't have any. Uh, again, I'm going to reiterate the three points that I made initially, which is uh, uh, neighborhood watch, code enforcement, and parks, uh, or adopt a park, I should say. I know you're working out of the three. I think you're more advanced in the adopt a park uh, provision, but I do think uh, neighborhood watch is instrumental as we move forward, as well as code enforcement, uh, whether it be through ad hoc committee, which I'm more than happy to volunteer for, Mayor. Uh, or through okay. some other measure, but again, we really need to push both items, all three items, I should say, um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Dale, the uh, downtown uh, park, uh, Friendship Park, I think they call it, mm -hmm. where when you were crossing the border, that's the first park you hit. Is there, are the restrooms working there or are they still locked? I have, have to check. Is there any? <laughs> they're locked? Yes, they're locked. They're still locked. We have, we have issues with not just that restroom, we have many restrooms that need to be repaired. I was in San Diego this weekend and I was in Balboa Park and I went to the restroom and as I walked in, I see a lot of homeless people inside, mm -hmm. inside the restroom. It scared me, so I, said, oh, <laughs> I better go in and out. But uh, if they're being locked, uh, nobody's in there, I guess the access to, uh, Toilets and water and urinals here. We're looking at the possibility in the future of maybe keeping them open during the day and close, locking maybe. them in at night, but that requires another Good. person to come and check it out and do that work. So, also the, the little quarter thing. The quarter, yeah. Okay. All those uh, in favor for a journey, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting.